I do not want to answer this question. It's probably not the best way to respond to a journalist. And yet, this is how I reacted when asked what would happen if Russia dropped a nuclear bomb on Ukraine? What would happen if there is a nuclear war between the United States and Russia? I knew the answers, but it made me physically sick to provide them. All I could say was, let's pause and think how in 2022 we are talking about nuclear use. How did we get here? Russia's invasion of Ukraine and heightened nuclear risks of the last few months brought to the forefront what was true all along. We are all hostages as long as nuclear weapons exist. Life as we know it can end tomorrow. A single nuclear weapon can destroy a city. The blast will kill everyone near the ground zero. Thermal radiation will vaporize everything. Heat will burn people's skin and start fires. People will get killed or get injured from collapsing buildings. Long after the explosion, radiation will continue to kill people and poison the environment. Nowadays, we worry about our planet's temperatures going up. But in case of even a small-scale nuclear exchange, temperatures will drop. Crops will decline. There will be global famine. In the case of a large-scale nuclear war, nuclear winter will descend on our planet. If a 50-megaton bomb is dropped on Boston, almost 2 million people will die. Another million will get injured. A nuclear fireball will cover nearly 30 square miles, vaporizing everything inside. Why do we choose to live in such a world, in the world with more than 13,000 nuclear weapons? Why did nine countries with nuclear weapons persuade us that they need nuclear weapons for their security? These nine countries are the United States, Russia, China, France, the United Kingdom, India, Pakistan, North Korea, and Israel that neither confirms nor denies its nuclear arsenal. How come the security of these nine countries is more important than the security of the rest of the world? I work in the field of nuclear politics, and I must admit, often it's really hard to keep hopeful that one day we will live in a world free of nuclear weapons, but today I have a hopeful story to tell all of you. It's a story about a country that had more than a thousand nuclear weapons, tons of nuclear material. It could have kept it all. This is the country of my birth, Kazakhstan. Why, you might wonder, a place that many heard little about, found itself with a nuclear stash like that. Kazakhstan's nuclear story started in 49, when the Soviet government started testing nuclear weapons in the Kazakh steppe. The Soviet leaders didn't care about Kazakh lives or the environment. And I should warn you, the next slide contains a graphic image. Nobody told local people about the harmful impact of radiation. Over the next 40 years, the Soviet military carried out more than 450 nuclear tests, making Kazakhs lose their children to stillbirths and miscarriages, breeding cancers to young and old, and causing premature deaths and suicides. The Soviet government also used Kazakhstan's immense uranium resources and built facilities producing nuclear material. The Soviet military also placed warheads, heavy bombers, and intercontinental ballistic missiles that could reach the United States. In 1991, the Soviet Union collapsed under, under its own weight. Kazakhstan received independence and finally had a choice of what kind of country it wanted to become. 
deciding the fate of its nuclear inheritance was at the heart of that choice. Kazakhstan was in crisis. The economy was in shambles after the Soviet collapse. Supermarkets were absolutely bare. There were no sweets in the shops. I remember as kids, we would put some sugar on a spoon and burn it over a gas stove, making our own DIY candy. Kazakhstan had no military of its own and almost no diplomats. The Kazakh leaders faced the daunting task of building a new country from the ground up. They felt deeply insecure. Two of Kazakhstan's neighbors, Russia and China, were nuclear powers. Some politicians in Russia claimed that parts of the Kazakh land belonged to Russia. With China, Kazakhstan inherited border disputes from the Soviet time. And you would think that in a situation like that, nuclear weapons might actually appear appealing. While Kazakhstan didn't have operational control over the Soviet nuclear weapons on its territory, their fate could not be decided without Kazakhstan. More importantly, Kazakhstan fully controlled tons of nuclear material from which you could build nuclear weapons, and there were also nuclear facilities on its territory. Why then Kazakhstan decided to give up on a nuclear path? Some reasons were practical. While Kazakhstan was poor, its land was rich. Oil reserves, uranium, the entire periodic table of elements was sitting on the ground waiting to be explored. What Kazakhstan needed the most was access to foreign technology, investment, and markets trying to muscle its way into a nuclear club would shut many doors. But above all, it was about national identity. It was about making a choice. A country that suffered from the Soviet nuclear tests saw nuclear weapons as evil. Kazakh people knew firsthand the kind of heartbreak and tragedy that nuclear weapon programs bring. But also, it was about what kind of country Kazakhstan wanted to become. It didn't want to make the world a more dangerous place. It didn't want to inspire other countries to go nuclear. For 70 years, Kazakhstan was invisible to the international community. It was hidden be behind the Iron Curtain. And now, suddenly, it had a chance to enter the world on its own terms. And it decided to enter it as a responsible player. Kazakhstan said no to the most powerful weapon. What it asked in return from nuclear powers were security guarantees, a promise that nuclear powers will respect Kazakhstan's sovereignty and territorial integrity. One of the manifestations of that uh, promise was the Budapest Memorandum, signed by the United States, United Kingdom, and Russia. Ukraine received the same promises, and we all know that Russia trumped on its promise when it annexed Crimea in 2014, and when it invaded Ukraine earlier this year. I started my talk today by sharing the kind of common questions I've been receiving since the beginning of the war, what would happen if Russia drops a nuclear bomb on Ukraine. But there is another question that I've been asked a lot since the war began. And that question is, should Kazakhstan regret giving up nuclear weapons? And my answer is no. Kazakhstan made a decision. Kazakhstan decided it didn't want to be a source of nuclear threat. It decided it didn't want to be a pariah state. And I think it's our task now, a very important task for all of us, to make countries like Kazakhstan, like Ukraine, never doubt their choice. And next time you hear about the United States spending billions of dollars on its nuclear arsenal, or about North Korea starving its people but pouring money into its nuclear program, Remember that societies have a choice. 
countries have a choice. It is possible to say no to a nuclear bomb.